everyone, welcome back to Medical Terminology 1. This week we're going to be discussing Chapter 2, Body Structure and Directional Terminology. Let's get started. Lesson 2.1, Organization of the Body. Recognize and use terms associated with the organization of the body. Let's dive in. Organization of the human body. The human body is composed of several distinct systems that interact with each other. Can anyone name some of the body systems? Perhaps you're thinking of cardiovascular, digestive, or respiratory? Systems are composed of a number of organs. Notice the combining forms for organ can be organo or viscero. Viscera, meaning organs, is the plural of viscous, which is a single organ. Each organ is composed of a variety of tissues. The combining form for tissues is histo. The four types of tissues are muscular, epithelial, connective, and nervous. Finally, cells make up tissues. Notice the combining form cyto and cellulo. Here's a good image to help you remember that cells make up tissue, tissues make up organs, organs make up systems, and finally, systems make up an organism. Here we have homeostasis. Homeo means same, and stasis means controlling. Homeostasis is a normal process of maintaining balance within the body. Can you think of an example of this balancing act the body is constantly maintaining? Part of the balancing act that the body is involved in is the process of energy conversion. Anabolism is the process of throwing up as in building up, while catabolism, while catabolism is the process of throwing down as in breaking down. Metabolism is the total process of building up and breaking down the body's energy stores. What are some of the factors that affect metabolism? Certainly taking in food will cause you to build up your energy reserves, while exercising will break them down. In order to live, cells need a constant supply of energy. The prefix meta means change, although we will see this form with another meaning later. Then we have bolo, which means throw or throwing. And the suffix ism means the state of. So metabolism is the process of continually building up and breaking down substances that provide energy. The ancient Greeks thought of it as substances being changed by the process of throwing. It's important to remember that metabolism takes place at a cellular level. Let's look at the composition of a cell to see what roles its organelles, which are little organs, play. First, we have the cell membrane, which is a thin outer wall that encloses the contents of the cell. Within that, we have cytoplasm, the substance that holds the organelles of the cell. Cyto means cell, while plasm means formation. It is a formation inside of the cell. Next, we have lysosome, an organelle that serves as a digestive function. Lyso means dissolving, while sum means body. It's a body albeit a tiny one, that serves to dissolve substances for the use of cell nutrition. Next, we have ribosome, an organelle that is the site of protein formation. Ribo means ribose, or a substance critical in the formation of RNA, which is ribonucleic acid, and some, as always, means body. This organelle is the site of protein formation in the cell. Lastly, we have the mitochondrion. Plural form of this is mitochondria. This is the organelle that converts nutrients and energy in the presence of oxygen. Then we have nucleus, control center of the cell which holds the DNA, which is the deoxyribonucleic acid, which contains genetic information. Next, let's discuss some tissues. First, we need to know the difference between parenchymal and stromal. So parenchymal does the work of an organ and stromal is supportive in nature. An example of parenchymal tissue would be the kidneys. An example of stromal would be the ureters as they support the function of the kidney. Tissue types. First, we have epithelial tissue, which acts as an internal or external covering for organs most prone to cancer because of contact with the environment. Next, we have connective tissue, which has the property of an internal structure network. Then, muscular tissue, which has a unique ability to contract and relax. 
Finally, we have nervous tissue, which serves to provide for the transmission of information within the body. Examples of types of tissues include outer layer of the skin or the lining of the digestive tract for epithelial tissue. Connective tissue includes bone, blood, and fat. Muscular tissue includes heart, skeletal, and visceral muscle. And nervous tissue includes nerves, spinal cord, and brain. Notice that organs have an easy combining form along with one that is more difficult. The combining form viscero, derived from plural form for organs, viscera, the singular form is viscous, which rhymes with discus. Which do you think you're going to see more of, organo or viscero? Viscero, of course, it's the harder one to remember. Organs are arrangements of different tissues. For example, the heart is composed of epithelial tissue along with muscular tissue. The endocardium is the lining of the chambers of the heart, the epithelial tissue, while the myocardium is the muscle tissue of the heart. It's good to note that organs can have functions in more than one system. For example, the pancreas secretes hormones in the endocrine system while it also functions as a gastrointestinal organ. Throughout your career in healthcare, you will not only need to know the names of organs, but you will also need to recognize the locations within the organs. There is a standard terminology to describe locations, and that is what we need to cover next. The apex is the pointed extremity of an organ. In this image of the heart, you can see that the apex is at the bottom, whereas in this image of the lungs, the apex is at the top. The plural of apex is apices. Remember the rule, if a term ends in ex, it can be made plural by dropping the ex and adding ices. The body of an organ is the largest or most important part of the organ. A synonym is corpus. Note the combining forms are caporo, somo, and somato. Here's an image of a stomach where you can see the body and our next part, the fundus. The fundus is the base or deepest part of an organ. Uterine fundal height is an important measurement when determining the age of the fetus. It is measured from the pubic bone to the top of the uterus. And lastly, we have the fornix, which is the arched part of an organ or structure. An example would be the fornices of the vagina. They are the vault-like arches that are the deepest part of the vagina. Organs are parts of body systems. The musculoskeletal system serves to support the body, protect internal organs, kind of think of the rib cage, and it also helps move the body. A combining form for this area might be costo, which means ribs. The integumentary system is that of the skin. Its function is to cover and protect the body from disease. Combining form for this area of the body might be dermato, which means skin. The gastrointestinal system is responsible for nourishing the body. A word part that we might use for this is combining form entero, which means small intestine. The urinary system is key in the elimination of nitrogenous waste. A combining form for this section might be cysto, meaning bladder. The reproductive systems are responsible for keeping our genetic material available through the function of reproduction. Two combining forms that you might see are andro, which means male, and gynaco, which means female. The blood, lymphatic, and immune systems are responsible for the transportation of nutrients and waste and protecting the body against disease. Word parts you may see here are combining form hemo, meaning blood, and lympho, meaning lymph. Lymph is the liquid that is in the lymphatic system. The cardiovascular system serves to transport blood throughout the body. A word part you might see here is combining form arterio, meaning artery. The respiratory system delivers oxygen to cells and removes carbon dioxide. Word part that you might see here combining form pulmono, which means lungs. The nervous system, along with behavioral health, is responsible for the reception and processing of information that is perceived by the organism. Word part you might hear combining form neuro, meaning nerve. The special senses, which are your eyes and ears, are responsible for gathering visual and auditory information. Word parts you may see here combining form oculo, meaning eye, and auto, ear. Finally, the endocrine system is responsible for affecting change in the body through the use of chemical messengers termed hormones. 
word part you may see here, combining form adin, which means gland. Specialties and specialists. So cytology is the study of cells, Why a cytologist is the one who specializes in the study of cells. Histology is the study of tissues, while a histologist is the one who specializes in the study of tissues. The term anatomy has a literal meaning of to cut up or apart. We know that this really means the study of the structure of the body. So an anatomist, no, not an anatomologist, is the one who specializes in the structure of the body. Physiology comes from the root physio, having to do with growth. However, physiology is the study of the functions of the body, with the physiologist being the one who is the specialist in the study of the function of the body. Studying the body. Pathology is the study of disease. Patho is the combining form for disease. You will see this one quite a bit. The specialist is a pathologist. If you are an individual who loves healthcare and can tolerate blood and guts, but are not terribly good with patients, you might want to consider pathology. You'll be looking at cells, tissues, organs, or dead bodies. The term biopsy comes from bio, meaning life or living, and opsy, meaning a viewing. Hence, a biopsy is a viewing of living tissue. Biopsies are important as tissue samples are used to diagnose diseases. The term necropsy is the opposite of biopsy. Here, necro means dead or death. A necropsy is the viewing of dead tissue. Another name for this is autopsy, a much more common term, but one that is etymologically a little more obscure. Auto means self. The meaning comes from pathologist, meaning their self viewing the tissue, not the dead person. Lesson 2.2, positions, body cavities, regions, quadrants, and planes. Here we're going to recognize and use terms associated with positional and directional vocabulary. We will recognize and use terms associated with body cavities. We will recognize and use terms associated with abdominopelvic regions and quadrants, as well as recognize and use terms associated with planes of the body. Anatomic position. Have you ever heard the story of the blind men who were trying to describe an elephant? One was touching his trunk, another his body, another his tail. They obviously have three very different descriptions of what they perceived. It is important that we all have the same frame of reference when we describe where a wound, burn, or pain occurs on the body. Our next terms will go through the body with the words used to describe the anatomy on the surface of the body. We're going to begin with the ventral surface of anatomy. Ventral means front. We're going to begin with the head and the neck. Buccal means pertaining to the cheek. Bucco is a combining form for the cheek. Then we have cephalic, which means pertaining to the head. Cephalo means head. Cervical means pertaining to the neck. Cervico means neck, but be careful. In the female reproductive system, cervico refers to the neck of the cervix as well. Pay attention to the context of what you're reading to understand which neck is being talked about. Cranial means pertaining to the skull. Cranio means skull. Facial means pertaining to the face. Facio means the face. Another be careful. Don't confuse facio with fascio, the tough outer covering of the muscles. Frontal literally means pertaining to the front. In the context of the surface of anatomy, it refers to the forehead. Mental means pertaining to the chin when you're talking about the surface anatomy of the face. The mental foramina are the small holes in the bone of the lower jaw that provide an entrance and exit for blood vessels and nerves. Then we have nasal, which means pertaining to the nose. Naso is a combining form for nose. Next we have ocular, which means pertaining to the eye. Oculo is combining form for the eye. Oral means pertaining to the mouth. Oro is the combining form for mouth. Finally, we have otic. Otic is pertaining to the ear. Auto is combining form for the ear. Next, let's cover the ventral surface of the trunk. First, we have abdominal, meaning pertaining to the abdomen. Abdomino 
is one of the combining forms for the abdomen. Don't confuse abdomen with the stomach. The abdomen is a region, not an organ. Please notice the change of the E to an I when using the combining form. Axillary means pertaining to the armpit. Axillo is the combining form for armpit. Next we have coxal, which means pertaining to the hip. Coxo is a combining form for the hip. Deltoid means resembling a triangle, which describes the muscle that covers the shoulder. Delto is the combining form for the deltoid muscle. Inguinal means pertaining to the groin. Inguino is a combining form for groin. Mammary means pertaining to the breast. Mammo is their combining form for breast. Pelvic means pertaining to the pelvis. The combining form for pelvis is pelvi. Sternal means pertaining to the sternum, also known as the breastbone. Sterno is the combining form for the sternum. Then we have thoracic, which means pertaining to the chest. Thoraco is a combining form for the chest. And lastly, we have umbilical, which means pertaining to the navel, also known as the belly button. Umbilico is a combining form for umbilicus. You still with me? Let's go ahead and continue on to the arms. So we have antecubital, which means pertaining to the front, that's where ante comes in, of the elbow, which is cubito. Next we have brachial, which means pertaining to the arm. Brachio is a combining form for arm. You may also see something similar when we talk about the respiratory system, but don't worry, we'll cover that later. Then we have carpal, which means pertaining to the wrist. Carpo is combining form for the wrist. Manual means pertaining to the hand. Manu is combining form for the hand. Palmar is pertaining to the palm of the hand. Palmo is our combining form for palm. Then finally we have digital, which means pertaining to the whole finger or toe. Digito is a combining form for finger or toe. Let's move on down to the legs. So first we have crural, which means pertaining to the leg. Cruro is a combining form for the leg. Femoral means pertaining to the thigh. The femur is the thigh bone. So femoro means thigh bone. Then we have patellar, which means pertaining to the knee. Patella is a combining form for the knee and the kneecap. Pedal is pertaining to the foot. Pedo is a combining form for the foot. Another be careful though, don't confuse pedo meaning foot with pedo meaning children. The context rules, those matter here. Then we have plantar. Plantar means pertaining to the sole of the foot. Planto is a combining form for the sole. And finally, tarsal means pertaining to the ankle. Tarso is a combining form for the ankle and the tarsals, which are also known as the ankle bones. I like to say we are lucky that we live in the Tar Heel state because it helps us remember tarsal is the foot area or the ankle. Now that we've gotten the front out of the way, let's go ahead and do some of the back anatomy, which is known as dorsal. So first we have acromial, which means pertaining to the shoulder. Acromio is a combining form for the shoulder or the acromion process. Did you know that this is actually a compound term built from acro meaning extremity and omo meaning shoulder? It refers to the highest point of the shoulder. Then we have dorsal, again, which means pertaining to the back. Dorso is our combining form for the back. Then we have gluteal, means pertaining to the buttocks. Gluteo is the combining form for the buttocks. Then we have lumbar, meaning pertaining to the loins or the lower back. Lumbo means lower back or loins. Next we have nucal, meaning pertaining to the neck. Nuco means neck. Then we have perineal, which means pertaining to the perineum. Then sacral, which means pertaining to the sacrum. As you can see, the sacrum is below the lumbar region. Sacro means the sacrum. Be careful here too. Sarco looks very similar, but means flesh. Then we have scapular, meaning pertaining to the scapula or the shoulder blade. Scapulo is our combining form for this. Next we have vertebral, which means pertaining to the vertebrae. 
the bones in the back. Vertebro means vertebrae. Next we have olcranol, which means pertaining to the elbow. Olcrano is the combining form for elbow. Then we have popliteal, means pertaining to the back of the knee. Popliteo is the combining form for back of the knee. Finally, we have sural, which means pertaining to the calf. Suro is the combining form for the calf. All right, it's time to get into some positional and directional terms. In English, we would say front and back, but we're not in English anymore. Anterior means pertaining to the front. It's abbreviated A-N-T, ant, and has a synonym, ventral. Ventro is a combining form used in ventral, meaning the belly side, which you can understand to mean the same as front. The back is posterior, with an abbreviation of POS, pos. The synonym for posterior is dorsal. Remember that from surface anatomy? Ventral and dorsal are also used to describe the back and the belly side of animals. Why is the definition of ventral, the belly side, more useful than the definition of anterior for front for animals? It's kind of hard to determine the area under a dog or a cat's face as part of its back or front. If you think of having an animal stand on its back feet, you can easily see the part of the belly side or the ventral surface. These two are pretty important. Superior means pertaining to upward. Supero is the combining form meaning upward. The abbreviation for superior is sup. The abbreviation for superior is sup, S-U-P. Cephalad means towards the head. Cephalo is a combining form meaning the head. I'd also like to include that the suffix ad means towards. Then we have inferior, which means pertaining to downward. Infero is the combining form meaning downward. INF or INF is the abbreviation. COD means towards the tail. CAUDO is the combining form for the tail. Again, why is the definition of CAUDA towards the tail a more useful definition in animals than in humans? Up and down are even harder to discern on animals, so it's either towards the head or towards the tail. You're probably going to see these two a lot. Medial means pertaining to the middle. Doesn't it look like that? With medio being a combining form for middle, also where we get the size medium. Lateral, however, means pertaining to the side. Latero is a combining form for the side. The abbreviation is lat, L-A-T. If you look down at your foot, you will see that the big toes are medial to the little toes, and the little toes are lateral to the big toes. You may see these in some documentation. Ipsilateral means pertaining to the same side. The prefix ipsi means the same. Contralateral means pertaining to the opposite side. Contra is the prefix meaning the opposite. An example of most strokes affecting the contralateral side of the body is a good one for this term. You will be guaranteed to see these two terms. Unilateral means pertaining to one side. Uni is the prefix for one. Bilateral means pertaining to two sides. Bi is a prefix that means two. Don't confuse the prefix bi with the combining form bio, meaning life or living. Unilateral and bilateral may be easier to remember if you think about how many wheels are on a unicycle as opposed to how many are on a bicycle. Pay attention to these two terms. They tend to be ones that students struggle a bit with. Proximal means pertaining to near the point of origin. Proximo is combining form for near. Then we have distal, which means pertaining to farther away from the point of origin. Disto is a combining form for far. Think of with distal, you have distance, and proximal, you're in proximate area or space to something, you're close. A frame of reference is important in this definition. That is why the definition includes the point of origin. If the terms are used to describe a location that is nearer to or farther from the point of origin of the arms and legs, they are referring to the shoulders and hips respectively. If proximal and distal are used to describe sites within the body, they're referring to the beginning and the end of the organ. An example would be, the wrist is distal to the elbow. 
or the knee is proximal to the ankle. Next we have superficial and deep. Superficial means pertaining to the surface. A superficial wound is on the surface. External is used to mean the same as superficial. Then we have deep. Deep means away from the surface of the body. This means the same as internal. Here are some directional terms you will not be able to escape. When a patient is in supine position, they are lying on their back. When the patient is in a prone position, they are lying on their stomach. These are some interesting terms to know. So here we have right and left, or dextro or dextrad, or sinistrad. Combining forms are sinistro and levo. You may be interested in the origin of these terms in cultures that considered the body to have a good and a evil side. For instance, those who are dexterous are considered to be skilled, especially with the hands. Those who are sinister are considered to be almost evil. In medical terminology, however, these word parts only refer to right and left. Finally, we have afferent and efferent. Afferent is pertaining to carrying towards a structure, whereas efferent means pertaining to carrying away from a structure. Afferent vessels carry substances towards a structure, like the kidneys, while efferent vessels carry substances away from the structure. Now let's talk about body cavities. Looking inside, we can see that the body is composed of cavities in the back of the body, the dorsal cavities, and in the front of the body, the ventral cavities. The dorsal cavities are the cranial cavity, remember that cranio means skull, and the spine cavity, spino is a combining form meaning spine. The ventral cavities are the thoracic cavities, thoraco means chest, the abdominal cavity, abdomino means abdomen, and the pelvic cavity. Pelvi is a combining form for the pelvis. I find it fascinating and interesting that the majority of the cavities are protected by bones. We have the skull, the vertebrae, the ribs, and the hip bones. The thoracic cavity is filled with the lungs, the heart, the esophagus, and the trachea, which we know as the windpipe. It too has cavities. The space between the lungs is called the mediastinum. Combining form for this is mediastino. The double folded membrane that surrounds the lungs is termed the pleura. The space between the folds is called the pleural cavity. The abdominal cavity contains the stomach, the liver, and the intestines, among others. It is separate from the thoracic cavity by a muscle called the diaphragm. Combining form diaphragmo or diaphragmato or freno. The cavity is lined with a highly vascular membrane called the peritoneum. Combining form for this is peritoneo. The pelvic cavity, although often listed with the abdominal cavity, contains the bladder and the reproductive organs. If the abdominal and pelvic cavities are referred to together, the cavity is the abdomino-pelvic cavity. Note that the first initial of each of the ventral cavities together spells the word tap. Abdomino-pelvic regions. These regions describe the surface area over the abdominopelvic cavities. For all my note takers and non note takers out there, I will show you how to label them from right to left. So this is your region one, region two, region three, region four, region five, region six, region seven, region eight, and region nine. Make sure to also label each region correctly. You'll notice these two top ones are a hypo, which is below or less than prefix. However, it's at the top. Another meaning for the term hypochondriac in ancient times, it was thought to be the area under the cartilage of the ribs, which is responsible for a mental condition of individuals who think they may have an illness when in reality they don't. For actual purposes, hypochondriac refers to, it's pertaining to ac, hypo below chondra cartilage. So it's the area below the cartilage and we're talking about the cartilage of the ribs, which is right here. And you can notice we have our epigastric region right here. Epi means upon, above, or over. And then we have hypo, again, meaning below. Down here we have hypogastric. As we remember, hypo means below. So remember you do have hypo here, hypo here, and hypo here. 
and the epigastric is going to mean upon the stomach and then the hypogastric region means below the stomach. Do keep in mind that right and left are always going to be the patient's right and left, never your right and left. So these should be mirrored. Let's go over the regions one more time. So we have the right hypochondriac region, which is region number one. We have the epigastric region, number two. The left hypochondriac region, number three. The right lumbar region, number four. The umbilical region, which is number five, and also our center point. Then we have our left lumbar region, number six. Our right iliac region, or inguinal region, known as number seven, hypogastric region, number eight, and our left iliac region, number nine. Next, we'll discuss our abdominopelvic quadrants. Abdominopelvic quadrants divide the area into four segments. Remember, quadri means four. They are either upper or lower and left or right. The right upper quadrant is the location of the liver, while the left upper quadrant is the location of the stomach and spleen. The right lower quadrant is the location of the appendix, intestines, and ovaries in a female. Located directly above the appendix, approximately two-thirds the way between the hip bone and the navel, is called the McBurney's point. The left lower quadrant contains the same organs as the right, except for the appendix. Monroe's point is a location about halfway between the hip bone and the navel in this quadrant and it is standard site of entrance for the abdominal laparoscopic surgery. I invite you to draw the abdominopelvic quadrants. Label their diagrams correctly with right and left. Remember, this is the patient's right and left, not your right and left. I would also like to note that some professionals also use the abbreviations RUQ, LUQ, RLQ, and LLQ. A way that I personally use to remember McBurney and Monroe's point and which side's on what is I think of Bernie's here in Smithfield that has donuts and delicious treats. It's always a right time to bring Bernie's. And then with Monroe's, even though it's spelt differently, I think of Marilyn Monroe and she left before her time. Therefore, left would be Monroe. Finally, let's wrap up by discussing planes of the body. Planes are slices of the body that are used in imaging. Sagittal separates the sides, or you could say the right from the left. Mid-sagittal separates them exactly in the middle. The frontal or coronal separates the front from the back into anterior and posterior portions. The example here is of a transverse plane, the type that is used in CT scans. Transverse planes separate the body into superior and inferior portions. Oblique planes, not as commonly used, divide the body at a slanted angle. All right, everyone, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing you for our next chapter.